Okay, let's put some new firmware on our ESP. When you first got your ESP, typically it would come with AT commands. So the firmware is there and it understands these commands here. Like uh, you could tell it to send data to a website or you can reset it, all kinds of stuff here. Uh, but it re that means it requires another device to talk to the ESP. That could be an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. I find it more exciting to actually make the whole thing run on the ESP itself. And that's what this firmware allows us to do. Note MCU is a brand new firmware that basically we erase the whole firmware that is on the ESP. And we put this guy and he is an interpreter and he understands things like this. It, uh, let's just pick the... Yeah, here, here is the, how you would do a, a simple turning on and off of an I.O. It looks just like Arduino code right here, but it is running on the ESP. There is no Arduino, and so you don't even need a compiler or anything because it's an interpreter. So you type this, and then it interprets this, and it actually does it in real time. So there is no compile time at all. And it, it is amazing. I mean, you could write an, an HTTP server right here. So you type this code onto the ESP itself, and then it's basically listening for a web request from a web browser and then when you receive that web request it will actually send back to the web browser hello node mcu so very exciting so let's get started so we need to download a couple things so we need to download the actual firmware and then we need to have a tool to actually take the firmware that we downloaded and put it onto our esp and then finally we need some sort of tool to actually type code on the pc and then have that interpreted uh, on the ESP. I've written this one and so I'm biased towards this one. It's not the flashiest thing. Let me show you that. So this little tool here allows us to talk to the ESP which is at a particular COM port and then you can restart it. You can write your code right here and then you can actually save it to the ESP. And then you can also load it back from the ESP. Thanks for um, somebody helped me with this code here. So I thought that, that was kind of exciting that uh, there's collaboration with the internet. Okay, uh, but this is not the only answer. Uh, you can use any terminal tool or somebody wrote this really elaborate one here called ES Explorer that a lot of people like. I actually haven't used it because I'm so used to this. So you're welcome to try that one too, of course. So let's get started. I will put these links on the video description so you can just click them. But uh, the you know, firmware has a lot of stuff. We won't use all of them. But there's all kinds of examples here too, so they'll come in handy. So these are all sample code, how to do telnet, how to do uh, one wire, and all kinds of other stuff here. To download this, it, you, know, you don't want to download every one of those, but there's a really handy thing right here. So you download it as a zip file, and then unzip it. That's for the firmware, for the tool to actually take the Lua firmware, put it onto the ESP. You use this guy right here, there's a download link right there. And this is for the Lua uploader to start writing Lua code and put it onto and upload it to the ESP. And this one you click right here to download it. And by the time you're done, you should have these three zip files. You know, unzip them and then let's get uh, put uh, let's put the firmware onto the ESP. As I warned you earlier, this pin here, the GPIO zero has two functions one to actually act as an IO pin so you can connect it to LEDs or switches but also when you first turn on the ESP it functions as a mode switch to know whether you're trying to burn the firmware or actually you want to run the code that is on the ESP and because we are trying to burn the firmware right now we do need to bring this down to ground so go ahead and I've wired mine such that this is connected to ground and then we could turn it on and when you turn it on you can run the Lua uploader this is a handy way to actually find out what port the uh, ESP is at so uh, com I don't know why there's always a COM1 there but of course uh, 3036 is the only device I have which is that ESP uh, uh, the, the ESP that is connected to the FTDI right here so this FTDI has the, I has the COM port 36 so that's the only reason uh, we run this is so we could find out the uh, COM port. Once we get a COM port, what we want is to run the ESP flasher. Put the COM port that we found out, 36. We need to figure out where the firmware is at. And that is at 
you know the download that you downloaded earlier the firmware and then there there is the pre-built so we don't have to compile this firmware and thankfully and then there's the latest one so go do that and now you just say download it so now it's connecting oh why does it fail I had the ESP not turned on so I have the FTDI here connected to the PC but I did not have power to the ESP that's why it was failing so yeah once you pick the firmware that you want to upload you pick the COM port where the ESP is which is where the uh, FTDI is at and then you just press download and it takes maybe about a minute or so and when it's done it says yeah I'm leaving it, this is perfectly fine because yeah, we got 100 here and now basically we have our firmware on the ESP and the fun begins <laughs> so let's run this Lua uploader and now we could say make sure that we're at the right com ports there this refreshes and then uh, these these are fine the defaults are fine so if we restart it we should actually see why are you not talking to me oh <laughs> remember the uh, ground over here it still thinks that we are trying to uh, put another firmware yes as I said earlier when you have this pin uh, on ground of course it thinks that you are trying to uh, program the firmware and I forgot to unplug it so unplug this from ground and restart it you know, turn off power and turn back on and we should have now able to talk to the node MCU and there it is so uh, we're still talking through the comp to the comp port through the uh, FTDI, but now when you restart it, we're actually this is the actual Node MCU firmware running here completely by itself. There's no Arduino here still, and now we could actually talk to it. So you can say things like uh, execute that line, and it says, "Oh yeah, it's nil still because we have not set up our Wi-Fi access point ID or password to the Wi-Fi. It has no idea about these." But uh, we could do things like uh, turn on the uh, LED, for instance. So uh, let's just say I want to say the LED pin is this. And I have a shortcut here, Alt-X. If I pre press Alt-X on my keyboard, it's actually going to do that. And this is how cool Node MCU is. To declare a variable, no var, no int, no nothing. It just say LED pin 4. That's a comment. So everything after is a comment. And now... I could actually turn on the LED by just doing this. Why doesn't it turn on? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just setting up the pin mode. And then we actually want to turn it on. Uh, let's see. And by turning it, the LED state to zero here. And there it is. You could see it on the little webcam uh, inside that I have here. And to turn it back on, you just change the state to so that's right now zero so we'll set it to one there's no semicolon needed even I don't know why I put that semicolon there and there it is so it is that simple to be able to uh, talk to it and you just write your code and let's have fun mm -hmm.